With most of the installations done, I decided to dress up the P47 by adding the stickers. These aren't water slide decals, but rather they have a sticky back to them. In the manual, Top Flight says to remove the paper backing and then dip the sticker in some water that has a little bit of dishwashing liquid added to it. Then we use a paper towel to get out most of the water. After that, we use a piece of balsa wood to squeegee out the rest of the water in bubbles. The balsa wood is soft enough that it doesn't mar up the decals or the finish on the plane. The instruction manual has several photographs that show you where the stickers go. I've never been a real pro at putting stickers on an airplane, but I'm happy with the way the P-47 turned out. Once again, Top Flight adds a little more quality to a kit where others cut corners. To me, a Warbird just doesn't look right if it doesn't have some decent graphics on it. The pilots that flew these things during the Second World War took pride in these graphics on their planes. And it's just right that we do also. Here I'm getting the plane ready to run the motor for the first time, so this is a good time to check the nuts and bolts again. You don't often find bolts like this loose from the factory, but it does happen. It takes just a few seconds to check these bolts, and I think that's time well spent. Anytime I have a cowl off, it's automatic for me to go over the muffler bolts. This is a bison muffler with a lot of hours on it, and I've never had it come loose, but I still check it whenever I take the cowl off. I use a cordless driver to run the prop bolts down, but I don't use it to tighten them up. I always use a hex wrench so I can feel how tight things are getting. After snugging all four bolts down the first time, I go back over them in a star pattern, tightening each a little bit more as I go. It's just easier to be sure that all of the bolts are tightened equally. This is a brand new prop, and a prop washer will compress it slightly. I try to check the prop every couple of flights for a while until that compression stops. I made this set of wheels for the P-47 so it's easier to get into the trailer and move around at the field before we put the wing on. There's nothing fancy here, but I do have a story on my website about how to build one for yourself. Everything under the hatch is all secured and ready to go. I put the on-off switch and a fuel dot under the hatch to keep the plane a little cleaner looking. This is also the first time that I'm going to be using a Rotoflow quick fire filter. This uses an automotive filter cartridge, but more importantly it holds a little bit of gas at the carburetor to make starting a lot easier. And because it holds a little bit of fuel, it evens out the flow of the fuel to the carburetor. And when I have everything ready to start, I can just put the hatch on and we're all ready to go. If you're not using these hex head bolts for holding your servo arms on, you need to see the story about them on my site. These bolts make it very easy to get the servo arms tight, and you can also loosen them up very easy as well. When I put the wing on the P-47, I have to attach cables for the flaps, ailerons, and the landing gear. I label each one with a piece of tape so I can be sure that I've got the right wires connected before I bolt the wing down. I have the tank full of fuel, and this will be the first time we're starting the EME-60. One of the reasons a new motor is so hard to start is because we never have the bottom end of the throttle throw in the right place. I keep opening the throttle slightly as I hear the motor pop, and we keep doing it until all of a sudden it'll start. Then I use the sub trim to get the motor idling at a nice speed with no trim showing at the throttle. When you get that bottom end of the throttle set up, that also makes the motor start a lot easier. It turns out that the ME60 wants the fight starting a whole lot less than many other motors I've had. It's important that you let the motor warm up good before you start messing around with any trim settings. This is the second EME motor I've had, and like the first one, once it gets warmed up, the throttle mixture screws are perfect. I'm editing this video the week after I actually made this plane, and I still haven't touched the mixture screw on this or the EME70 that I had earlier. Both of the motors just run perfectly. I really like using the hatch on a P-47. It gives me good access to the on-off switch and the fuel filling line. I can also see how much fuel is left after each flight. And that makes it a lot easier to figure out how long we can fly this plane safely. I always run these motors again after I put the cowl on. On some planes the cowl can change the airflow enough that you might have to adjust the carburetor. And we would find that the P-47 has a nice flow through the cowl and didn't take any carburetor changes. Once again, the EME-60 ran perfectly with the cowl on, so now all that's left is to take it to the field and make it. 